I began talking to you several days ago from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 32. And I want us to read that again. Proverbs 1, 32. And let's start with verse 31 to get it in context. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And here's my, my text, my cornerstone text that we've been talking about for the last several days in this series. And the, the title of this message, it was also the first point of this message. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And I began talking to you about the prosperity of fools, the paths of fools, the patterns of fools, the practices of fools, the promotion of fools. And I want to pick up where we left off. And I'm going to settle down today a little bit. I'm introducing a new format here in my office. Usually I preach. I feel led to do some teaching, to teach you as a pastor would do, to calm down, to talk to you face to face, and to teach you line upon line, precept and precept, precept by precept, here a little and there a little. A peer of mine, a contemporary of mine in the ministry that you all have heard of, who's a household name, Joel Osteen, is preaching and writing and tweeting and making videos about how we don't have to have any problems. We don't have to suffer. As a matter of fact, Joel says, if we serve God and have faith properly, that, quote, we are invisible to the enemy. We're invisible to our enemies. Well, all due respect to Joel, who's a very nice guy, but that's just not scriptural. It's either at Joel Osteen or the book of Joel. Paul suffered terribly at the hand of his enemies. Satan gave him a, a thorn in the flesh. Peter was persecuted, being crucified upside down. Paul said, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. John the Apostle was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, where he wrote the book of the Revelation in the Bible. John the Baptist lost his head. You're not invisible to the enemy. No, the more you preach the truth, the more you take a stand on the word, the more visible you are to the enemy, the more the enemy, the adversary, the accuser of the brethren comes to attack us and to persecute us, and to destroy us. And I want to begin today talking about a man by the name of Stephen. Stephen is widely known as the first Christian martyr. He's the first one who gave his life for Jesus Christ. Stephen had been a deacon, an elder, and he was promoted to the role of an evangelist. And he began preaching. And how many of you know sometimes, like with Noah, you don't have many converts. Noah had no converts. Jeremiah was the only prophet who was telling Israel, you're going to have 70 years captive in Babylon. All the other prophets were lying. They were saying it's just going to be peace and safety and limitless prosperity, the prosperity of fools. The enemy cannot touch you. You're never going to go into Babylon. But Jeremiah said, Nebuchadnezzar is being raised up by God as a judgment, and you're going to go there for 70 years. Well, guess what? Both Noah and Jeremiah were vindicated. You see, popular preachers who have the populism of fools, the progressionism of fools, the popularity of fools are not always right. I told you yesterday that even though sin is in, that doesn't mean that sin is right. Now, Stephen did five things. He did five things right. Number one, Stephen 
read the book of Joel. He had enough sense to turn off the Joel Osteen broadcast. Amen. He had enough sense to throw the purpose-driven life and the purpose-driven church by Rick Warren in the garbage. And he went to the Word of God instead. And he not only read the book of Joel, he did what the book of Joel said. How many of you have regular daily Bible reading? Regular daily quiet times? But not only did Stephen read the book of Joel, secondly, Stephen was beaten black and blue for the kingdom of God. So many of you talk about you want to be healed by the stripes of Jesus, and that's great because healing is in the cross and the atonement, but you're not willing to bear the stripes of the cross. You're not willing to bear the cross. You're not willing to take up your cross and follow me as Jesus said. But Stephen was beaten black and blue. Thirdly, Stephen was bloodied and he was bruised for Christ. So many of y'all want Christ without the cross. You want the Savior without the suffering. But it doesn't work that way. All who live godly in Christ shall be persecuted. Why do they hate me so much on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook? Why am I either the most hated or the most slash ignored preacher in America? Because what I preach is true. I don't tell you what you want to hear. I tell you what you need to hear. I'm not interested in your felt needs as much as I am in building your faith. I'm not a seeker-sensitive preacher. I'm a savior-sensitive preacher. I don't answer to the government of 12. That's humanistic. That's man. I answer to the government of God. I'm not part of the church growth movement. I don't care how many numbers you have. All the church growth movement is growing is cancer. I want you to grow as an individual Christian. Stephen, fourthly, he was made bereft of his very life. He was made bereft of his very life. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 12, they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Then we stop, we stop and we shout and we praise the Lord, but there's more to the verse. And then it says, not only did they overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, it says they love not their lives unto the death. You see, Jesus says that we have to lose all, leave all, and love all for the sake of the kingdom of God. God says that if we want truly Jesus to be Lord of our life, we have to sign our life away on the bottom dotted line of commitment. It has to be about commitment, faithfulness, and power, honesty, sincerity, integrity, as the love of God and the lovers of God arise. Stephen was made bereft of his very life. And finally, number five, Stephen was broken in pieces. He was broken in pieces and stoned for his stand for Jesus Christ. Solomon had 666 talents of the gold of Ophir in 1 Kings 10, 14. Solomon had 700 wives and probably as many idols. Solomon was the Nespotic second generation son of David, a type of the Antichrist. But what did Stephen have? It's like Peter said on the day of Pentecost, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee on the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. The church is not to lay up treasures. We're not to amass silver and gold in bank accounts and investments and stock portfolios and real estate holdings and building large buildings and cathedrals and temples. God forbid horrors. Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? Stephen, he did not have silver and gold, but hallelujah to the Lamb of God forevermore. He walks on streets of gold. The church today is, is we, are, we are pursuing Silver and gold, money, the filthy lucre as God is the God of money, the God of self, the God of entertainment, the God of education, the God of tech. These are the false gods. These are the, these are the gods of the 20s, the electronic gods of the 20s. But God says, God forbid. Now, just as Stephen is dying, one of the most amazing scriptures anywhere in the Word of God is found. The scripture says that Jesus in heaven, he stood. Hallelujah. He stood. He stood and he gave Stephen a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Stephen got a standing ovation. 
ovation from Jesus Christ. What about you? You see, when you die, when you depart this life, two things are going to happen. God is either going to say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into my kingdom. Or he's going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, I never knew you. And so many of you are going to say, like Matthew 7, Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I heal the sick in your name. I prophesied in your name. But Jesus says, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. You see, you're working for your salvation with your works, but you're not trusting in the blood of the cross. You think you know God, but you don't know God. Stephen knew God, and Jesus knew him, and Jesus gave him a standing ovation. Now, simply let me ask you, what about you? What happens when you die? Are you ready to meet God? In this message, I have been talking about the principle of fools. Fools live by many principles, but they're wrong. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I've talked about the education aisle. In this message, I've talked about the proverbs of fools. Now, Solomon, he wrote three or four books in the Bible. And yet, the man died and is in hell. Judas Iscariot walked with Jesus Christ, but he died and he went to hell. What a thought that you can write the Bible or walk with Jesus and still split hell wide open, go to hell in a handbasket. Satan was once the archangel Lucifer, the guardian of the throne of God, the praise leader of the kingdom of heaven, the archangel of God, the most beautiful of all God's creations. But he said, I will ascend my throne above the stars of God. I will be as God. And he led a coup d'etat against God that lasted about five seconds. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning to the earth. And forever Satan will burn in an everlasting eternal hell that God created for him. You see, it doesn't matter what you do. It matters what Jesus did on the cross. It doesn't matter your works and your effort and your flesh. What matters is what Jesus did for you on the cross. We have in this nation, we have the instruction of fools in our schools. We have the professing of fools. We have... Fools being fools, professing themselves to be wise, and yet they became fools. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord today. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord. I believe you're risen from the dead. Be my Lord. Do that today. I'll talk to you next time. It's Pastor Mike. God bless you. I love you.